Okay, guys, so this is the CSP Unit 2 Assessment uh, 2 review. Just wanted to go over some questions with you. Number three is uh, a question that you already took. I think you saw this question twice already. You have binary numbers, decimal, and hexadecimal numbers. Now remember, binary numbers is just zeros and ones, right? And you have to know how to turn that into decimal, which is our regular number, which is down here. Decimal is 1 through 10. That's the numbers that we know how to use since the time we were born, right? Hexadecimal goes from 1 through F. So there's 16 digits. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So make sure you remember how to convert these. If you look in your notebook somewhere or even look up the word hexadecimal online, you should be able to study. And the question is the same thing. List numbers from least to greatest, okay? Now, number five, metadata. Just remember what that means. That's data that explains data. Okay, so you just have to know what that means in order to solve the problem. I cannot tell you much about number one, two, four, because it's just common sense. You have to read it carefully and answer it, okay? Number six is about Google Trends. It shows you a chart. It's kind of like your um, assessment, that project that you did, but they already made the chart for you, and then um, they ask you some questions, and you have to understand what Google Trends show. Now, just... As a reminder, when we study Google Trends, what did we learn about? We learned that Google Trends is just what people searched up, right? So just because people search up the word red a lot doesn't mean that the world is invaded by red crayons, right? Okay, so you just have to remember what Google Trends is. It's just a compilation of everything that people were searching using Google, YouTube, and all that stuff, okay? Just keep that in mind. Now, number seven is about search trends. So what do they represent? It's the same thing as number six, right? What do they represent? Remember Google flu trends? So are they always accurate predictors of what will happen in the future? We talked about Google flu trends and we talked about how they predicted things, but they were not really accurate, right? Okay, so then they do predict things, right? However, is it always accurate or are they imperfect predictors? And then does it represent the society as a whole or does it not represent the society as a whole, right? Because remember, there are some people who don't have access to internet, right? Number eight, uh, it's just about data cleaning up. So if you already turned in all your assignment, you already know the answer to number eight. It was super easy. But if you didn't do the assignment, you're going to have some problems. So please make sure that you finish all your assignments before coming to class tomorrow. Number nine, I just want to make sure that I let you know that there are two answers. Okay, it even says on the test there are two answers, but I just wanted to clarify that there are really two answers. And you are looking for bias. So when you are doing a survey, the person doing the survey always has a bias. Okay, so what are the two bias? with this data that this student has collected. They give you a set of data and you have to work with the same data for, I think with question number seven, eight, nine, and 10. I think it was four questions, right? So just think about it. Uh, what are some people that she's leaving out? You know, um, are the questions like open-ended questions? Because usually when we ask questions for surveys, we can't do that. They have to pick one of the four options because otherwise cleaning up data is very difficult for us. And you already know that, right? We experienced that with the data tracker. So think about that. Number 10 is best visualization. I told you that lesson is really important. Uh, so you had a lesson where you had to make charts using data. I think it was on movie ratings. And uh, you learned how to make a line chart, a bar chart, and a scatter plot. So you have to look at these four options. I think it's the same thing. They have a line chart, a bar chart, uh, and uh, scatter plot and all that stuff. And out of the four, you got to pick the best one that represents the data that the girl collected. Okay, so remember, you cannot just pick something that looks pretty. You have to pick the one that explains, like as soon as you look at the, the chart, you know right away what they're talking about. Okay, I hope this helps, but if not, you always have the option of coming into class early. I know you love your lunch, but you can do that and ask me some questions, but this is the best I can do. Make sure you study. Don't forget everything else you need to turn in by tomorrow. Have a great day.